Okay, guys. Show you a little something. It's the start to that project I was telling you about in the last video, Power Ranger stuff. So, if you want to know how I got to this stage, keep watching this video, and I'll show you the Rotocaster and how we got to here. Hey guys, JP uh, back with uh, some updates and whatnot. Uh, now, before we get started, um, the last video which I'm uploading right now, uh, I uh, was finishing the mold for the Red Ranger helmet, uh, which I discussed that I will be using as forms to build the other Ranger helmets off of. Okay, uh, since the video, the mold is cured and it came out. Um, and I did have a uh, very success, very successful casting. Okay, um, what you never saw the original sculpt, but this is the original. And uh, originally, I had uh, it was in two pieces, and I put them back together and I glued it, and then on the inside I shored it up with some plastic to make it back solid. And then I just came on the outside here and I put some clay across. And then the visor was kind of chopped up, so I just put some clay in there. And then uh, I basically made a, a base out of uh, cardboard, sturdy. And uh, it's just cardboard and hot glue. Um, so that's what I used to mold it over. And this is the casting. And you can see that, uh, see where the clay is, right? It's decently thick, but this helmet is decently thick. It's actually really thick. Um, what this enabled me to do, though, since it's thick like this, is I will be able to sand this back into the rounded shape, and then I could make my cut anywhere I want. Um, so if I'm changing the face of the helmet up, I can modify the back to split at whatever level I need uh, so the top stays looking right um, so it does have warps and stuff uh, seam line and whatnot but uh, these are things we're gonna take care of as we make each helmet so with that being said uh, I will come over here and I'll show you that I have the helmet mold set up in the rotocast. Now, I showed you guys this rotocaster uh, a while back. It was in the prototype stage. Well, at first I was going to put a motor on it to make it turn by itself, and I was going to put a motor on it to make it rock. But I wanted to simplify things because eventually I want to make plans available for everybody um, to make this caster. Now, what this caster does is it takes your traditional roto casting by hand and it makes it a little easier. Okay? Now, the way this works is I'll put my plastic in this end here. Okay? And depending on what mold I use, like when I did the Pit Boy, uh, I had a cap that went on this end. And a tube, I poured the resin in, and the resin wouldn't come out. Okay. So, all I've done here is basically I just take taking my mold, which this is the rubber mold with the fiberglass mold, mother mold wrapped around it, trimmed it up, and I put a hole here and a hole here. And just those two little screws fastens this plenty tight within this frame I made. Now, you'll see that this... The, uh, the whole structure rocks, all right? And the reason for this is by it rocking, I can control the resin moving to the front of the helmet or the back of the helmet. And with my handle here, and I know a lot of this sounds preschool to a lot of people, but I'm just explaining how I'm moving the plastic around. This handle here allows me to move the resin around the helmet. So, 
by turning and rocking it, I can get an even uniform coat inside the helmet, which makes the amount of resin I use much more economical because I can evenly distribute it around the helmet. Also, with helmets like these that are made to fit form fit to the character's head, uh, you need the inside to be completely smooth. That way it doesn't take up space inside the helmet that you could use for padding and whatnot. Now, I'll show you the helmet that was casted. Hopefully, I can see inside of it with my camera. But you can see in there, or not really, but anyway, it's, it's very smooth. There's no plastic built up in one more spot or the other. The only parts that's not smooth is actually the neck. Um, and you don't need, you'll be cutting that off anyway. That's actually a lot of wasted plastic. But with the plastic you're saving by evenly moving it around the helmet, um, you're still saving plastic either way. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video and I'm going to get set up uh, with my plastic and whatnot. And then uh, I'll actually video uh, making the casting on the rotocaster. And uh, all you guys doing it by hand, I think you'll really enjoy this. And uh, it's really simple uh, to make the rotocaster. Like I said, I haven't quite masterminded the plans, but um, I guess eventually I can do an overview of what it took to make it. Um, now as far as the casting, uh, I'm using SmoothCast 320. It's a little more yellow of a plastic, but it's very strong at the right thickness, and it's very durable, easy to sand. Uh, it's what I use in most of my casting. Sometimes I tint it. Sometimes I use uh, SmoothCast Ox which uh, cures a little faster than I really want uh, for this application. It cures faster than this stuff. Um, but the black is nicer when you're painting darker colors and you don't want scratches to show up. So uh, basically this is a one-to-one -one mixture. One part of this to one part of this. Mix it up. I got my little stir sticks here. Uh, I got some solo cups in case I need them. I want to mix a small batch. Got my regular mixing cup here, which all the stuff gets thrown away because the resin ruins everything. Um, and I got my gloves. Uh, gloves you gotta have. This stuff gets on you, yeah you can peel it off, but the thin stuff that gets on you, man, it seems like you have to wear that stuff off. So, um, I'll go ahead and stop right here and um, go ahead and make a separate video and edit it in I guess so professional I know um, but anyway I'll be able to show you me actually using this thing and uh, we'll do another section and I'll show you pulling the uh, actual helmet molded from this so uh, until the next one enjoy guys <laughs> Okay guys, uh, go ahead and tell you where I'm at. I've just uh, actually poured the resin in the helmet and it's 24 ounces of resin so it's, uh, it's a pretty good amount. Um, way more than you would normally put in uh, if you were hand casting. Um, but anyway, so as you can see I'm just spinning the mold rotationally and uh, I'm able to look at the bottom of the mold and see where my plastic is flowing exactly much like you would do it if you were doing it by hand but I'm getting a much more uniform manual movement now I do get a little leakage out the bottom plastic wise um, but like I said the plastic you're gonna lose is it's not gonna be that bad um, as to compare to uneven casting uh, by hand doing it now the, uh, I have black bisqueen laid down, and that's to catch uh, any of the spill, which didn't do very good because I just spilled some on the floor there. But I guess we'll worry about that later. Um, yeah. It's also 
also a good way to check your mold for leaks. So if you have leaks and you put 24 ounces of resin in it, you'll definitely find all the holes. Definitely. Um, so anyway, uh, this is pretty boring. All right, now we gave it a little time, molds cooled down a reasonable bit, and uh, we're going to demold this bad boy. So mine I have uh, just three screws and nuts holding it right now. We'll accommodate more, but I haven't seen a need to add more because the mold fits so tight. Now, to handle the actual fiberglass section, I am going to be using gloves because I haven't taken the time to, uh, to sand it down like I normally do. Normally, I take a really rough, like a 40 grit sandpaper and uh, just go over the whole thing. So, put my gloves on. And this mold came out pretty good and strong, so should just be able to pry open up on one of the ends here and it separate. Pull one, one side off at a time. There you go. Rock hard fiberglass. Can't beat it. Now, plasti paste is good, but good old fiberglass get it from the store and for what it is it's really cheap sturdy hard good hold can't beat it okay we'll just pull out the other it's coming out just as easy that right there and we don't need the gloves at this point because we're just handling the rubber part so I have a split line in the back just comes out like that and the good thing about this dragon skin stuff is it stretches really good. So you just go ahead and pull over. Now I'm noticing that I have a thin spot by the chin here. And I'm going to stop this video and I'm going to fix that. Because right now it's very easy to fix. Just kind of checking the helmet. See what kind of thickness I'm looking at. And, uh, I think that's going to do uh, pretty good. So uh, about 48 ounces per helmet. So that means those two gallons there should yield me around five helmets, and I'll have a little plastic left over. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pour me a small batch of plastic in that chin right there, and uh, we'll put the video back on after it cures. Okay, guys, here we are. Uh, back with our finished pull. Uh, I had a little thin spot in there, so I added a little plastic and uh, bamba lamba. Uh, there's a thin spot here in the chin. But added some plastic, it isn't quite cured yet, but uh, works. Works for what we're going to be doing. We're going to be modifying them anyway, so uh, a couple air bubbles in the mold, but. Nothing really that bad. With it being thick, we can uh, shave down a little bit and it'll all be all good. So, um, Cheap paint brushes apparently hold the bristles in the silicone. But uh, on this one, the uh, seam line is actually pretty flush. So. Um, overall, pretty much the same casting. Uh, I'm going to make a few more of these tonight while I have the time uh, in order to complete all the rangers. So, anyway, there you go guys. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed and uh, maybe next video I'll get a little more in depth of uh, the Rotocaster and uh, maybe how you can make your own. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get back to work. and. Uh, See you guys on the next one.